Hi, horses. Uh, I got a new audio interface. So, uh, how do I sound? Is the question. Here. Hey, Key of Weird. I watched your review and retweeted it as I saw that you saw. Why, thank you. Okay, cool. Um, uh, okay, that's good, because I'm not really sure how to use this puppy, but uh, I'm learning. Do I sound quiet? Also, Okay, can you see? Yeah, you can still hear me. I got a RME baby face. A little quieter. Okay, hold on. Hello, test, test, test. Is that okay? Good now? Okay, now, what if I do this? How does that sound? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. The beard, I think, will come back. Echo stays on. I prayed for you in mass. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I have not heard back about partnership yet. No. I don't know why, but they're giving me the... They're giving me the runaround. It's been three weeks. Filthy cave troll. Okay. Oh, yeah. Shalem's got to update all the emoji. Sounds better than the rel stream. Yeah. Well, that's not a very high bar, but I'm glad. I'm a beard rotate guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't like... Uh, I don't like being in the bathroom. No, I don't, I don't like shaving. It's boring. How's the Healthy Gamer video coming? I don't know. I don't know that it'll be my next video. I kind of want to see if anything happens or if it just dies down or what uh, with relation to the first one and my, my amended complaints and some other uh, things I'm... Journalists I'm talking to. I'm trying to get past this off to somebody else. This Putin guy you think I should look into. Well, I have an interview with a Russian professor tomorrow morning. Um, <clears throat> and he will answer all your questions about Putin or all mine. Uh, oh yeah, I saw Hassan had Chelsea Manning on. Yes, I was going to compliment that, but then I thought it would come off as passive aggressive. So I just didn't say anything. Probably a big debate at Twitch HQ. That's right. They're t probably talking about this nonstop. <clears throat> I wonder, yeah, I wonder what, I wonder how much of a uh, relationship, like, the, do they talk to Dr. K often? I don't, I don't want to, uh. um, I am going to stream the interview and also film it, so I might cut it into a more edited interview later. Um, I think it might be pretty short, though. He sounds pretty busy, so it might just be the stream and then the VOD. I'm still laughing over that panel with Fnatic a couple of years, uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, I wish uh, that had worked out differently. Although it did, it kind of funny. I swear it's been over two weeks since freedom of speech was ripped from the Discord. Yes, uh, for those of you who are not in the Discord who don't know, um, there were some complaints about harassment and people being mean and um, like not mean but like psycho and. Um, also, I'm, I'm kind of working on trying to make the Discord a place that's a little more friendly to women. And um, 
also a place where I'm not like embarrassed, you know, of. So I uh, removed all images and and emojis and reactions from the Discord, and um, as a social experiment. And I think it's going pretty well, despite people's complaints. I showed parts of your Dr. K video to a PhD in psychology. He said Dr. K should be locked up, so definitely did a good job. Yeah, I think that once more professionals see this, it's going uh, to... Th I assume that will be the kind of response. So, we'll see. Turning your Discord into an IRC is an experiment. Yeah, it is. What did I think of Anna? I think Anna is... Um, she feels very young and uh, in a way where it felt like um, I should be careful with her. That was my main thought. I was like, oh, I I don't know. She seemed to be ready for me to like wail on her, but I was like, you know, I, I just want to be like nice to you. You want your emote reactions back? She's 30. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant emotionally. She felt very young. You refuse to believe Anna is real? I think she knows how she's being perceived and kind of leans into it and turns it into a semi-ironic thing. She's 30, but also 12. Yeah, it, felt, it feels like part of her really is, like, very childish, and I... Um... So, so while the more adult part of her felt like it was attacking me, it felt like if I, I, I fought back, I would be, like, uh, attacking a... It's not a child, but she just seemed very vulnerable, like a child. She is partnered. She is partnered. I don't know how much being partnered actually changes things. Like, financially or logistically. I think being able to talk to Twitch would honestly be the best part of it for me. My tail fell off. Because there's stuff I want to do, but I'm like not sure if I'm allowed to do it. And I would like to be able to just ask them. This originally came with a stand, but I lost it. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to be leaning over like this today. Uh, this is Max from Where the Wild Things Are, which I was named after. Partners aren't allowed to shit talk other partners. Is that true? I feel like that's not true. The only reasons to partner are emote slots and guaranteed transcoding. Right, yeah, the multiple uh, stream quality. That would be cool. I would, I would like that. Uh, the movie was okay. It wasn't amazing. It was okay. <clears throat> Um, the way she tries to diagnose people with these traits despite her really small perspective and refusal to admit that really sucks. The rule is against harassment. Yeah, I don't think... I, maybe he's made a claim that I'm harassing him or maybe he will, but I don't, I don't think I'm harassing him. Do you like Spike Jones because you're a hipster? I like... I liked... I like some of most of Spike Jones's movies. Is there a Spike Jones movie that I like in total? Uh, did he direct Eternal Sunshine?
No. Uh, Michael Gondry. Or Mich- Michelle John Gondry. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I like him. Uh, Spike Jones directed her. It was fine. Why don't I stream on YouTube? I'm trying to get partnered on Twitch, and I think dual streaming would hurt that process. If they refuse me, I might start doing that. Oh, yeah, being John Malkovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Do the right thing? That's Spike Lee. I like Spike Lee more than I like Spike Jones. Do you ever get scared that you're going to get trapped in a loop of being outrageous? Like you'll have to keep one upping your takes. I don't think so. I think I don't I think I can be outrageous, but I I'm not trying to be, and I don't think that's a lot of the appeal of my content. I do think that is the initial like gets people's attention, but I don't think most people are watching me to see what crazy stuff I'll say next. Your use of light on your face is quite devilish in the photography community. Dark in the middle and light on both sides. Is this a deliberate artistic way of presenting yourself on stream? Um, I don't... Maybe. Uh, there's also there's also like um, a gigantic base trap right behind my desk that would make putting the light there kind of inconvenient. So it's a mix of how things ended up and... Uh, me being okay with how they ended up. Uh, I've watched, I've not watched Silver Lang's playbook, but I like him too. I can't remember his name. Right, Russell? What's his name? Something Russell? Yeah, people are taking me more seriously. Okay, let's get started. Uh, okay. Get in my office here. And my mic is working here. Let's get my... Uh, Audio output device. Yeah. Yeah. Test. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got a baby face. I got an army baby face. No, no more fucking red box crackly horseshit. Yeah, it fixed all my it fixed all the output problems, all the input uh, input problems. I think it, I think it was just dying, honestly. All right, <clears throat> baby, I'm ready. chat. I'll see you after this caller. Hello? Uh oh, they can't hear you. Hold on one second. I need to fix this. Okay, go ahead. All right, you hear me now? Yeah. All right, good. How you doing, sir? I'm doing okay. How are you? I am pretty good. I had some new good snow days. Got to run around and play with the dogs in the in the snow and the winter weather. That's always wonderful. That's very nice. Yes, sir. How about yourself? You doing all right? I'm hanging in there, yeah. Yeah, I noticed you lost the beard. I almost didn't recognize you. I'm still me. 
Yes, yes. I always thought you kind of made me think a little bit of MC Paul Barman. And you shaved the beard, now I think it a little bit more. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I'm not. Oh, uh, kind of a goofy rapper. Uh, 90s era, something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, real funny guy. Okay. Well, hmm. I'm, I may look into that. Yes, sir. In private. <laughs> Understand that. Definitely do that one in private. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I like to keep, keep my uh, reactions to such things to myself. Yes, sir. So, what do you want to talk about? Well. You've touched on a number of things that's been somewhat close uh, to my personal life. Uh, for one, you've recently blown up and kind of become a somebody when it comes to the interwebs. Um, so in that, you would have a lot of firsthand experience with a lot of the kind of hate that people take hold of. And I know there's a lot of folks out there that make it seem worse than what it is. I'm really thinking about trying to start some sort of, uh, I guess, a channel. Uh, I love content like yours, Destinies, things like that. And my wife and I, we also love a lot of content. Like, uh, there's a lot of good um, um, farms, little homesteaders and things like that. And to me, what's uh, what's missing in both worlds is is... is the political scheme, the political side of everything is, is just so about getting people and there's almost, it almost feels like there's no real good community in there. And there are people who try and strive, but like the sort of wholesomeness that I get from watching like, you know, my homesteading communities, I, I love that the interactions going to see each other, people getting along with each other. And it seems like, to me, looking at a lot of the things that have been happening in the past couple of years, we're possibly heading in that direction. But um, I also know that people that try to bring a lot of nuance usually aren't really loved. And I guess I worry a lot because my wife is, uh, well, stronger than most people, is it made from the same cloth I, can, I am. And I can pretty much walk through anything said about me and laugh about it. Well, I might cry about it too, but I'll be okay about it. And she tends to have less armor. And I guess I worry that I'll drag her through hell trying to do something like this. And she's, man, one of the sweetest girls in the world. Just about everybody that's ever met her just loved her to death. And so I, I, I guess uh, that would be the two things that I'm really stewing on. Or I guess one thing with two two parts to it. Um, the type of the content and the impact on your wife? Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice way to wrap it up there. Uh, man, she's my sunshine. She's my whole world. I would never want to do anything that would hurt her and she's pretty sure she can handle it all but I uh, I know that while I can be the sweetest guy in the world uh, I tend to be like a mirror whenever put into certain situations you know if someone's shitty with me I tend to be shitty with them if someone's really sweet with me I tend to be really sweet with them I could see that getting us into a lot of trouble <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, I guess kind of like I was asking before, like, uh, I mean, how much shit do you guys actually catch? You know, is it, we, we, we worry about people coming out to, cause I know that some folks get stalkers and, you know, and I, I guess you've been so controversial. I figured you must've caught a nice amount of hate. Yeah, I've I've got some threats and uh, hate mail for sure. 
Right, right. And my assumption is most of it will probably never manifest. But I'm so disconnected from a lot of these things, and then I turn around and, like, uh, hear about sweet Anita and her stalker problems or, you know, mm. little things here and there, and, boy, it does make me worry. <clears throat> There's uh there's always somebody that's gonna run a good birthday. So what are you asking me? That's what I've been trying to ask myself since uh since I requested to be on here, I guess. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's I know it sounds vague but it's one of the few things that I really can't make a decision on right now um, I'm usually well these days a pretty decisive person and I, I understand that you know you don't know a lot of the uh, problems that I face you know and, and the ways that I do I mean yeah, it's. Uh, well, I guess let's let's sorry, push back. Uh, I guess we might push back less towards wife and more towards. Uh, it seems like there's a need within, of it, especially in my mind, the political community, yeah. of something that's going to try to break all these terrible divides that we have and. I don't know. I'm one of the few people I know that I feel like I just love everybody no matter what. I've got, I've really got racist friends. You know, they're, they're a little racist. I love them. They don't hurt people. So, you know, I try to talk to them. I've got friends that are anti-Semitic. And I could sit down and have a conversation with them. I had a friend that was, uh, man, he hated Jews with everything in his passion. He said, well, he thought that the Jews in Israel were fake Jews and all of these things sit down and have conversations with him eight years later and you know he started to realize there was so much silliness in this um i don't know um i feel not like i am the only person but i do feel like i am one of a few people that could just sit down and have a conversation with someone mm -hmm. and uh i don't know i feel like that's something the internet needs and i feel like that's something i kind of need but I don't know if that's something that uh, <laughs> I would hate to go pushing a product that's not necessary. Um, and honestly, I'm kind of unplugged in so many ways that I wouldn't know if it's necessary or not. So that might be a good way to phrase the advice that I would like. You want me to tell am you I, if, you're, if you're necessary or not? Or am I delusional? <laughs> Um, I, I I feel like I am being narcissistic in so many ways, but at the same time, I really can sit down and talk to just about anyone, and 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 as long as they're not being a dick about stuff, I can hear them out and disagree with them and not hate them, and that just seems so rare today. Um, I don't I don't think it's narcissistic. I think that. Um... Okay. I think people like watching streamers and YouTubers and like there would be no there there would be no YouTube or Twitch if we didn't have you know content Very creators. true. Very very true. <laughs> you know, it's not like you're like trying to force people to watch you, so Right, um, right, right, right. If they're interested, they'll watch. True. Well, I tell you, I uh, I feel like just getting to talk to somebody outside of my circle about this and feel like it's helped me put things in a little different perspective. I'm going to go ahead and bounce off here, man, and let you chat with everybody else. Just remember that... Um... If, if people in your circle are not used to like content creators or talking to them or being friends with them or mm -hmm. watching them. Um, they like, they won't like get it, 
you know? No. And, yeah. And that, um, that can, that can feel pretty discouraging where like, um, you're, you're telling um, them that you want to like have this like job or career or hobby or whatever it's going to be to you that they, they inherently don't understand that could, that can feel discouraging. Well, uh, my sweet wife is about behind me a hundred percent, except she worries about the, the cringy stuff I might say. <laughs> Um, like I said, I'm usually a sweet guy, but I got a good sense of humor. I'll crack a joke like, well, she's mm, about half native. Her mother's almost full blood. And uh, if they're sending a text or, or uh, you know, I need one to call the other one, I send your mama a smoke signal. And, you know, I know that kind of stuff. I ain't going to fly well. Um, mm -hmm. But in the sense in which we're doing it, it is so wholesome, you know. And I don't know, that worries me a lot. Um, I definitely wouldn't want any hate coming towards uh, those two women. They're real important to me. Hmm. Uh, if you achieve any degree of popularity, there will be hate and harassment towards yeah, yeah, uh, and every, yeah. every woman that you come in contact with. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're right. And yeah, man, I'm going to go ahead and bounce. I will say one thing. Uh, I'm a, I'm a lifelong left winger. And at the same time, Northern Southern is someone who's kind of worn my heart. And the way you interacted with her had me in tears. And I would say, I would say one thing about that. I'd say, try to take it easy on her because I found out one time I blocked an ambulance while I was out there in Occupy Oakland. And I, I don't know necessarily if anything bad happened about it. But the one thing I had to realize is if you don't upset the status quo, sometimes nobody stops to listen. And that's the job of the gadfly, the Socratarian, or Socrates style philosopher. Um, I, uh, I I think what you said to her was brilliant because it's a lot of the things that I put myself through after that. But the young mind want chaos, <laughs> and she was just a bitty baby then. But uh, at the same time, man, I think you handled that in a really great manner. I know a lot of people on both sides were visceral with both of you for one reason or the other but uh watching that was uh, even more interesting than watching destiny and her create the relationship that they did it's pretty magical man thank you you have a good day boss you too <laughs> bye bye Not answering any more haired or beard questions. He was equating blocking an ambulance with Lauren Southern attempting to block a rescue ship. It was an analogy that she brought up in our conversation. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay. Baby, I'm ready for the next one. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, hello. Hello, I can hear you as well. Okay, right. so I guess I'm kind of asking for advice then. So specifically, in October, what happened was um, my girlfriend was at a Halloween party. I was there as well, but I left a little bit earlier. It was her friend's house, so it was you know, everything safe and whatnot. She ends up kissing another guy at that party, okay? Okay. I get a call from her the next day. She's crying. She's very upset with what she's done ask her about the specifics and the details and uh, she says it was just a kiss you know he tried to kiss her for, uh, quite a bit when she was on the couch but uh, she ended up uh, giving in but then she left as soon as it happened and you know I forgave her pretty quickly to be honest like I wasn't that upset I wasn't yeah. I wasn't very upset at all actually and you know, obviously, I told my friends about the situation, and they said that they wouldn't have forgiven her if she was, if it was their girlfriends, or if they were me. And, you know, I think I, I don't think that's, like, I don't regret the decision I made. I'm still dating my girlfriend. That's why I call her my girlfriend, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, you know, it's. I wonder if maybe I wasn't harsh enough. Like, I didn't. Like the what I said was like, you know. I might be a fool for doing this, but, you know, uh, as long as it doesn't happen again, it, it's fine. But this is the last chance, right? But then my friends would say, maybe you just don't care enough. And maybe that's the problem. If you really cared about her, you'd be more upset. And that was more upset to the point where you would have broken up with her. In fact, uh, my girlfriend, I asked her, I asked my girlfriend what she would do if she was in my position. And she said she would have broken up with me, <laughs> which is fucking funny, right? <laughs> I was like, bro, what the fuck? I can't believe you did this to me. God damn, too forgiving. But I, I don't regret. I don't regret my decision. Um, yeah. But it, it would be nice to hear what you have to say about the situation, right? Do you think I was too forgiving? You think I'm uh, being a little bit naive? Um, do you think my friends are too harsh and that they're being naive and unforgiving? But I don't know. What do you think? Um, okay. First of all, I think when people say, Oh, if that happened, I would for sure break up with this person. I would never put up with that. People put up with all kinds of fucking shit. They say they wouldn't put up with. So I, I, I don't, I don't know if you know, but like, or if you mm -hmm. can know before it happens to you and before you're in the situation. But like, like I've, I've like, I know somebody who said that they would get divorced if their partner slapped them. Or, or, or spouse slap them. <laughs> I'm like, no, you wouldn't. You're not going to get divorced yeah. over one slap. Like, you're just not. <clears throat> I'm sure there are counterexamples. But generally, like, I I think people overestimate their willingness to just break off. It's easy to break up with an imaginary person whose life you're not fucking yeah. intertwined with. I agree. Um, so even, even your girlfriend, I don't know. I mean, like, I don't know if she can really say for that's really true. But... Mm -hmm. um, have you ever been in a, a open relationship? <laughs> no, I have not. Do you think you would? Do I think I would be in an open relationship? I um, guess I, <clears throat> just because there's like there's an assumption that your girlfriend kissing or having sex with another guy is the worst thing that can happen. Unless you are in an open relationship, in which case it's totally fine if that happens. And there's a weird like binary mm -hmm. there where like there's probably oh, yeah. people who are not in an open relationship, but who also don't care that much. Yeah, I agree. I think people people tend to overlook it. Like I'm not opposed to the idea of an open relationship. Um, it's like you know, I have pretty strong sexual desires. Why wouldn't like if I had an opportunity to be with a girl who was OK with it and if I could be relatively OK with it, why wouldn't I do it? Right. Um, and I guess we, me and my girlfriend, we've inter entertained the idea, um, but I don't know if I could, I think, I think it would be a little bit too weird, at least the first time. 
I don't think I could do it with my current girlfriend just because we've been dating for so long. But maybe if it was like a new, a different girl I, or a, a new girlfriend that I haven't been dating for a while, I think that'd be a lot easier to be honest. Do you sound right? like you're planning on not being in this relationship for that long? Is that true? That's actually not. That's not true. <laughs> but the I way have... you talked about that, it would be weird. Like for me, I know my girlfriend is probably listening to the show. If I was like, yeah, maybe with my next girlfriend, I don't know. Um, she'd probably freak out if she heard that. Now I'm right. assuming. I, I guess. Yeah. Go I guess ahead. I just didn't phrase that properly. If I had a different, a new girlfriend, I guess. Would be if I had phrase. a brand new, shiny, better girlfriend, then maybe I'd try. <laughs> but you know, with my current dusty old nasty girlfriend, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's the case. I think, uh, my current my current girlfriend is very very honest, but to like to the degree where it, it's quite shocking actually threw me off to begin with. A lot of this is gonna sound kind of like weird, but I think like a lot of girls like to virtue signal, so it's like they they'll they'll tell like white lies if it means not hurting someone's feelings. But mm. my girlfriend doesn't have any of that, right? So I think that's pretty good. And I don't know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be keen on finding anyone else if I did break up with my current girlfriend. At least I don't think so. But you just said people don't know what they would do in a different circumstance that they're not in. Yeah. Was she right. drunk? Yeah, she was really drunk. And I feel like that's another thing where it's like, um, the point of drinking is to lower your inhibitions and do things you wouldn't normally do. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it's, I don't know, for me, if if somebody cheated on me while drunk, I would, I mean, like, I guess there's just different components of it. One is like she yeah. broke a, she broke an agreement with you. And yes. like regardless of what that is, that is hurtful. Two, um, you found out that she has sexual desires for other people. But if you're not an idiot, you probably already knew that. And then three, she was tainted by another man's touch, which it also sounds like you don't care that much about. And I assume that's probably more of the sticking point for your friends that like. Yeah, they couldn't they couldn't really believe that I wasn't crying about it because I literally got over it really quickly. Yeah. Like not even really quickly. Like I wasn't crying about it. I was making jokes about it literally the next day. Right. Yeah. It just sounds like it, it might not be that big of a deal to you. And like, it isn't. And like what there's, they, um, they think it should be a big deal for me is what they think specifically. Yeah. I think that, um, like when I look around at my life and I look around at all my friends and family members and everybody I know and all their relationships, I wouldn't want to be in any of those relationships. Mm -hmm. Like I, there's no romantic relationship of anyone that I know that I would find acceptable for me. Except the and, one you're currently in. Yeah. And I, I assume that when they look at my relationship, they're completely fucking horrified by it. So I don't, I just think that the assumption that like, it's such like a deeply personal psychological thing of like your own sexual relationships, that the idea that they should be set up in a way that is palatable to other people, I find strange. Yeah, that's true. So I guess you say that this to each their own pretty much, that there's nothing that should be the case then maybe that yeah i mean and then on top of that like relationships suck also it's like i'm not saying that my relationship is perfect like i have, I have horrible problems with my relationship and it's like a it's like a struggle a lot of the time i'm not trying to say that like i have it figured out i'm just saying i haven't mm -hmm. i i like it more for me than i would like what any, anybody else has so i feel like that the dual i don't i feel like the double the problem with saying to each their own is it makes it sound like, well, you know, we, we just do what works for us. And like, you do what works for you. But like, it's also, there is nothing that works for anybody. All relationships are fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Like and they can be, so, they can be like incredibly terrible to the point where like, you should probably get out of it. But, yeah, but some um, relationships are better than others. Some are better than others, but like the, the cap on how like happy two people can really be like all the time. I feel like is pretty low. Like you're gonna always have constant problems. So if you're comparing it mm -hmm. to like a bunch of like Instagram shit, you're gonna feel like you have a sick, fucked up, unhappy, depressing <laughs> relationship. And I think that 
for some reason, when people talk about each other's relationships, mm -hmm. they that's the scale that they tend to use when they talk about them. Yeah. And it's like a very unrealistic. There's um, definitely a sense of competition. That's what it feels like sometimes. Like you're saying that they are, well, you're, they're saying that example, you're not. Like, well, no, this is a little bit off topic from my problem. I'm just saying that, for example, if you go like a, a couple get together, it seems like there's an air of competition, which couple is the best. It's just a yes. sense that I get. There's no empirical evidence for what I'm saying. It's just a sensation that I feel. And I feel you know, like couples too. are a little bit more touchy than they too. probably. Yeah. Right. Kind of yes. Weird. Yeah. Especially, especially the women. <laughs> right. I feel like, yeah, I know you're feeling a bit of it now, but I feel like for women particularly, it's almost like they see themselves as like, it's, they're the emotional janitors. Like it's their job to make sure the relationship is happy and display how happy it is to the other women mm -hmm. in attendance. And, um, yeah. I think it's because they're more afraid of looking bad than men are, but that's a generalization. Obviously, not all women think that. But I would say they're more I afraid. I would general, say, I think that women feel if you get in a fight in uh, in front of another couple, or there or there's any like unhappiness displayed, I think women feel that that specifically reflects more on them than it does on the man. Mm hmm. Guess that's interesting. I haven't thought about that. I think so. I guess it makes sense. I mean, no one usually says. No one usually thinks men take care of the emotional aspect of the relationship. Yeah. Right? I don't yeah. Think that's so true. women get humiliated if you yell at them in public. <laughs> I, I've noticed. I I have I've never seen that before. I've never seen a woman get yelled at in public before. Interesting. No, I haven't. I mean, I'm, I live in Canada. I doubt that that thing would fly by in public. Oh, I guess that happens more here, maybe. I I guess, but I've never I've never seen that. I get very angry at my at my girlfriend in public. Really? Yeah. You don't get like weird stares. Um, sometimes. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, I guess let me let me ask you this question then, since I've asked my friends and my girlfriend, if that's okay, okay. with you, of course. Yeah, yeah, go um, ahead. What would, what would you have done in my situation? And try try your very best to put yourself in it so you can give the most accurate answer you can. Um, I would probably just talk about my feelings. And if I felt like it was something, if I felt like it was something I couldn't stand ever happening again, I would probably want, I, I would say if you're saying the reason you did this is because you drink, then... Mm -hmm and you, you have a problem with it, then I think you have a drinking problem. Like I, I would want to define this as a alcohol problem. Oh, yeah. I would say if you're doing stuff that you promised me you wouldn't, like if you want to have an open relationship, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get in the headset, the mindset of what I would do. I would say, bitch, <laughs> if you want to have an open relationship, that's one thing, but you said you God, don't want to have an open, I'd say you don't want to have an open relationship, right? <clears throat> So you are breaking your own boundaries about the relationship and you're saying you did it because a guy asked you to kiss him and presumably also because you were drunk. Now guys are going to ask you to kiss them all the time. So that's not something unless, unless you want our new boundary to be that you're not allowed to be around men. Um, <laughs> I think maybe you need to. Well, she What's was that? Crying. Sorry for interrupting you. She's crying. I was like, I'll never, I'll never drink, uh, get drunk if you're not there. And I'll always go home with you. I promise I'll never do it again. So she was pretty like. Yeah, I would say so. If you're if our if our agreement is that you turn into a untrustworthy slut when you are drunk, then mm -hmm. you'll need to be under my supervision when you drink. Yeah. Although to be fair, this is a slightly off topic. Not off yeah. topic. It's related. Like I I really have I I doubt a lot of the when people say that their inhibitions are lowered to the point where they can't control themselves when they're drunk, because I personally do not experience that. My I don't think it's the point that opposite of me though. I think it's she the point where they don't, they just don't care. Yeah. Sorry. They don't, that, yeah, dude, that's true as well. But you're saying you but don't experience that when you're drunk. Absolutely not. Like my girlfriend has like, she has very poor memory. Her, in, her inhibitions are way lower when she's drunk. My friend's girlfriend, she starts, like, fucking hitting things when she's drunk. 
Okay, that shit's annoying as fuck. And but when I'm drunk, I, I maybe maybe I'm just being, uh, maybe I don't know what I'm like when I'm drunk, but at least other people tell me that I'm pretty much the same. I do the same things. I just dance more, right? And I'm more talkative. But like, yeah, I don't get the urge to kiss other people. I'm, my memory's even better when I'm drunk than when I'm fucking sober, <laughs> right? I remember. Uh, when I was at my ex-girlfriend's place, I was fuck. I drank so much, I threw up, and I cleaned up after myself. Okay, and then an hour later, I threw up, and then cleaned up after myself again, and then passed out in the bed. Right? It's like I just don't believe when people said I shouldn't have said that. I was so fucking drunk. I'm like, I, I can't believe that. That that shit does not make any fucking sense to me. How could you? It's so easy. But maybe it just comes naturally to me. Maybe I I, I don't know. I don't know. I find I I, it, I become very doubtful of. Uh, people's motivations and so you think that she's using this as an excuse in a way if my initial anytime anyone says i did it because well I that's drunk, what your own girlfriend is saying to you so i'm asking yeah, you, i know is that... that's the problem it's like that's the implication you're so making honest to me usually right like 99 percent of the time she's so honest or i'm too naive to find out when she's lying but like when I hear people saying I was drunk, I'm like, that's a fucking lie. Every time someone tells me I was drunk, my my immediate intuition is they're fucking lying to me, right? Don't trust this person. And I think I, I have, you think what? Like my I, I think my intuition is quite good about people, but maybe I'm just being like, uh, I don't know what the word is right now. I can't think of it. I think you I think you might be assuming that people are more similar to you than they actually are. That's what my friends tell me all the time, yeah. I think that it is pretty well documented that drinking lowers your inhibitions. Mm -hmm. That is true. But still, it's like kind of like, are you, is this person lying to me? Because it's like a lot of people. I. They're, uh, go sorry, on. go ahead. Okay, I guess I'll go on. Um, a lot of people just, they like to use drinking as, as an excuse for poor behavior. Well, I think That's that. Problem. I think, I think when people say I don't really feel that way I would never do that but I was drunk and that's why I did it I agree that that is kind of probably not true but if people say like yes I I would want to kiss somebody at a party but mm -hmm. I normally wouldn't but I only did that because I was drunk are you mm -hmm. saying that you think if she was sober she would have done the same thing I guess I just it's like your whole framing of it as like being drunk mm -hmm. gives you the excuse to say that you so. you know what i'm saying like i just don't i don't agree yeah, with your your framing of it as like that it's just cover yeah. for doing things that you wouldn't normally do i think people actually do things they wouldn't normally do when they're drunk i i and not I just because they can saying. say that they were okay i'm sorry for cutting you off so much <laughs> that's okay um yeah i agree with what you're saying i don't think she would have done it if she wasn't drinking right but like right but, but still... also you're saying that's that's kind of an excuse I think I think it is a little bit of an excuse at the bit like it's not like it's a, it's either an excuse or it's not an excuse I'm sure there's like some degree which she may be using it as a crutch maybe not like it's 100% an excuse maybe she really was too drunk she wanted to kiss someone she was feeling kind of hot um, or like she wanted to like do something sexual so yeah that or, like her inhibitions are lowered enough to the point where she could get into a position where she's more easily, she's more easily going to kiss someone else, which obviously happened. So I'm sure it's true to some degree, but it also it might also be an excuse to a certain degree. But I can't figure that out because I'm not her, right? I'm not. I wasn't there, right? But I, I think for uh, to be on the safer side in life in general, if someone ever tells you that I was drunk and that's why I did it, you're probably better off assuming that they're using it as a crutch or they may be lying. I think that might be. Might it might be a good indication of who to avoid and who to who to keep close to you? I think, right? It's a little bit harder when it's your girlfriend. No, I don't think that's right. I just said that I you don't, don't think, think you're so. right. No, I don't agree okay. with you. I well, I disagree. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to just agree to disagree. Yeah, I know. I mean, I I, I get where you're coming from, and um, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, it's like I I actually I disagree with the conclusion, but I understand exactly why you would you would come to it. Yes, I un I also understand your stupid train of thought that led you to your incorrect conclusion as well. <laughs> well I think way, I think my incorrect conclusion 
has a good utility in terms of who to stay away from. Yeah. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for me then. All right. Well, yeah. So in conclusion, I would talk about my feelings and uh, I guess try to establish if the, I would say if, yeah, if our boundaries, dissol if alcohol dissolves our boundaries, then we need to be more careful with alcohol, I guess would be kind of what I would come down to. Okay. This sounds good then. Thank you. This fun talking to you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> it was only a penis kiss. Can you make Hassan your target instead of Dr. K? No. I'm not I'm not just a targeting laser. This is uh excessive un unmonitored wrongdoing is what is going to take for me to be like, "Oh, I need to focus on this person." Not just being whatever it is Hassan. I haven't watched that much Hassan's content. I don't I don't know anything about him that much. I just know that um his tweet about how he's going to donate ten dollars every time he dies in Dark Souls or uh, uh, Elden Ring is a little annoying, but I don't I, like that's not Batman doesn't break your skull just because you stole a candy bar, okay? Although what what Hassan does might be worse than that. I don't know, but he ain't no Doctor K. Doctor K is like the Penguin. What annoys me about that, um, that I know that every time he dies in Elden Ring, he will probably have made $5,000 since the last time he died. So just saying like, like I'm going to have a fundraiser stream and we're going to donate point oh 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 one percent of proceeds to Ukraine is, uh, just don't say that. Either make it a meaningful amount or just don't say it at all. That's that's what I think. Um, <clears throat> okay. But again, that's not that's I'm not saying that makes me want to swing full on to I'm going to take a stand against this man. I that I just I just disagree with that one thing he said. Um I think I want to do a panel on female horniness. I think that our society is not very good at handling when women are horny. Um, women themselves get upset about it. They don't know what to do. We don't know what to do with them. And I want to, I want to host a panel on this. So for sure, Stardust, I'm going to invite onto the panel. And, um, I'm thinking two other guests. Um, we should probably have a band on there. Um, I'll ask around and see who I can get together. And um, yeah, maybe this week, maybe next week. Mr. Girl's panel on female horniness. Maybe the problem of female horniness. Stay tuned. My horniness is your responsibility. Composed of all men. <laughs> Two men and stardust. Am I done giving advice? No. No, 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 no. <clears throat> there is a there is a problem with female horniness. Uh Kelly. If you want to be on the panel, you are you're welcome. Just let me know. Uh, yeah, there's a problem. 
Yeah, multiple problems. It is a problem, and then it. Co- I mean, it's a problem, and I I, th- I don't have anything else to say about it right now. But I think we're going to have to really get into it. Uh. Okay. Baby, I'm ready for the next caller. Hello. Hello. Uh, how are you, Max? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. I'm a little nervous, but hopefully I'll be okay. Um, I have advice to ask for. Okay. Um, I've written like a paragraph. I'll just read it. So okay. I said, uh, I'm a first year university student and I have a friend group in my university course that, I, that invited me to live with them since I hang out a lot with them. So I accepted. Then the process of finding a house, contacting agents, etc. But the problem is that I'm realizing more and more that I don't really like hanging out with them. I, I don't think they're bad people. I just find conversating with them to be very boring. I can uh, I can give more detail, but I just can't hunt, handle conversating with them for too long. It's exhausting and boring. Uh, and let alone live with them for the rest of my university time. Um, <laughs> the, advice, <laughs> the advice I want to ask is, uh, should I live with them? and learn to adapt around people I might find boring. Uh, and also it'd be less of a bad thing because uh, they, because I've told them that I do want to live with them and me pulling out last minute, you know, might be a bad thing that I shouldn't do. Um, and second is if I shouldn't live with them, should I tell them it's because I find them boring and risk going to my lectures and you know, having like an elephant in the room every time I enter the lecture hall? Or should I just come up with an excuse and, uh, you know, try to slither my way out of it? slither uh okay i think you've got a couple issues here one is um uh i think i you should probably make sure that this is really um what's going on because it could be something like i i've had friends who just kind of push people away and get scared of like closeness and commitment and being around other people and friendship and love like these things freak i could say they freak everybody out to some degree but some people are are have a lot of trouble with intimacy and so it could be that you are trying to come up with an excuse or justification for pushing these people away and um that that could be a bad idea if that's Um, what's happening can i reply to that specifically sure um I, I think the problem with them might be the fact that then like compared to other people that I know they are not intimate like they it feels like all of our conversations are very small talk and yeah. it's about you know their least favorite Christmas song or um, I don't know scooters or something and you know it's just um, so so <laughs> like it would be the opposite of what you're saying okay um, could you try getting closer to them um i've tried but it seems like they well one of them is like kind of like the leader of the friend group and the person seems to kind of reject intimacy or they don't like too much of it um um yeah one of them the other one is like detached from the friend group then this so it's gonna it's where the friend group is four people me and three others one of them isn't actually going to live with us. Um, they've detect like I feel like they noticed this like non-intimate thing, and so they're actually living with someone else. And so okay. well, the one remaining is me and these two other guys. And one of these other one of these guys is the one that I said that seems to you know not like intimacy. Least favorite, least favorite Christmas song. Yeah, yeah, that that's the guy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, and you don't feel like you and the other guy could like change the culture of the group or the house. I guess I just when I feel like I'm in a situation where people aren't being intimate enough to my liking, I usually try to just warp the situation until it is intimate. Um, 
at like whatever I need to do that. But I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm usually in favor of like trying to change or repair relationships rather than ditching them. So I've tried to, um, so we've had, uh, uh, we've had days where, uh, we'll, uh, I don't know, go to someone's house, we'll all drink, play card games. And, you know, in those times, because they're drunk or, you know, because they're less you know, composed, I'll try to get them to talk about, you know, topics and whatever. And it'll be like, it'll be like the kind of thing that that's only brought up then. And mm -hmm. like, we'll completely ignore those conversations when we're back to normal. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've tried sometimes. Um, what? Yeah, I mean, yeah, as I said, I've I've had some intimate, I mean, I haven't said this, but. I can have some intimate conversations with them sometimes, but like I, I don't know if I don't know if it will be possible. Like it will be it will come in phases. I don't know if it, it will be the kind of thing where it's like consistent for the next two years. I'm gonna you know be living with them. If that's what's gonna happen. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Uh, because yeah. you said that you, th you, th you said that you think that you can warp. Um, relationships into becoming more intimate do you think with the kind of person that i describe that you know christmas songs um do you think you'd be able to how... warp that person into becoming more intimate i don't know that i agree that that's a kind of person i think that everybody has some desire to be close to other people it's just a matter of how guarded they are but i feel like yeah, I think that by being more vulnerable yourself, you can kind of set a tone. Like if you go, like if I go to a dinner party and people are talking about, yeah, at least favorite Christmas song or whatever the fuck. And then I say, like, I've been really sad for the last week. Like it, it creates a situation where it would be very odd for someone to then be like but what about scooters and like some people will still try that but like i think you can pretty effectively like add some uh v like vulnerable emotional moisture to a situation that's pretty hard to dry up once you do that so you think i should be like getting More them open? to that stage i don't know i'm not saying i'm not saying you should i'm just saying i i like the the obvious straightforward answer is if you don't want to live with them, obviously don't live with them. And if you don't want to be friends with them, don't be friends with them. And like that, that seems like that's the straightforward answer. If everything you're saying is true, but I feel like my role here is not to just say, to give you permission to like dump people you don't want to be friends with. I want to also challenge you to think about the possibilities that like you may not have thought of. Yeah. So thinking about what you've told me, okay. um, it would be a challenge for me. Yeah. To be more vulnerable. Um, I find myself like, uh, m like maybe trying to get someone else to be vulnerable and then, um, have the intimate conversation about them or other people. Um, and I don't know if I, if I do want it, like, I mean, it sounds like a cool challenge, you know, if I want to, if I wanted to do that, but I don't know if I want to do that. Um, and second of all, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the one who's like carrying the conversation all the time. I want them to also try to, try to open the conversation, which doesn't ever happen. And okay, so, sometimes, yeah, go on, sorry. It's like you want to be a nudist, but you're just trying to get other people to get naked. <laughs> uh, actually, that might be a good description. And I feel like if you want to have a nudist household, you should probably get naked yourself. At, or at least but try what it. if I want a nudist household and then I'm the only naked person? Well, that's the risk. That's like the risk of being vulnerable. But I think but that... But that risk comes at a cost of being in two, two years with people that I don't like. Well, what, if you, why don't, what if you talk about this with them now? Because if I do, then, you know, I might risk... I don't know. It, it'll be like an awkward conversation. Like, why? Why? Like, it'll be a conversation Wait, about I... not having conversations that I like. Yes, yes. Maybe that's what you need to do. Because you said that you you were you were even considering 
saying, I'm not going to live with you because you're too boring or, um, I, or just living with them or trying to slither your way out of it. But none of your choices are actually just being intimate and vulnerable yourself. Like, what if you just said, like, I want to live with you, but if we're going to live together, I feel like we need to be closer friends. And like, you seem to want to keep me at a distance or our group at a distance that I think once we're living together is no longer really appropriate. It seems like we need to be close friends at, and what we're doing right now doesn't feel like my definition of close friends. Like I'm sure there's a way to say that in like the language of your friend group that would come off as yeah. more like natural and normal, but it seems like maybe that is the conversation that you need to have. Um, two things. Um, one, uh, sorry, I forgot what one was. Um, <laughs> Take your um, time. There's no hurry. Sorry. Okay. Um, I'm going to drink some water. Sure. Okay. Uh, what if I say that, yeah, uh, we should be more intimate and they don't know how to? Or we're all just like, okay, it's cool that we had this conversation. Like, yeah, that's that sounds good. All right, let's do that tomorrow. And no one does anything and everything stays the same. Like, what are the actions that we can take? I think you might need to bring it up again oh, and then reevaluate. Oh, I think it's at least worth trying to make things more to your liking. Yeah. Uh, you know how I said one and then I was going to say two. Can I say the two? Yeah. Um. So earlier you mentioned that I said that, oh, um, this person is the kind of person that X and Y. Um, yeah. And you said, oh, you don't know if the, um, they are kinds of people. Um, With this person in particular, they... Uh, I don't know if shielded is the right word, but they're very shielded. It feels like, but it, like they, uh, they, they have a lot of pressure on them from family and stuff, and it just seems like they've shielded them themselves in such a way that they can continue living life. But like, they don't have they don't have time, or you know, they don't have time or space to like just open up and you know be like that. They they have places to be and you know, etc. So okay. I, I don't know if I can. And this do pot, this pot, this, this maybe, maybe you, maybe you'll fail. But it's also possible that they'll be like, "Oh wow, nobody ever gave a shit about my feelings before." This is the, this is why I want to live with you, man. You know, I'm glad you brought that <laughs> up. Like, I, I understand it's unlikely, but yeah. right. I guess you're just approaching this with where like asking them for what you want doesn't seem to be on the table. Like, what if you just ask them instead of trying to um, get them drunk and like. You know, like just ask for what you want. And then if they say no, then the way they say I, no, or you're saying that they're going to say yes and then just not do it. That, or maybe like, I, 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 I just, uh, I guess, I guess I just have this idea in my mind that there are kinds of people and that like the people that I like hanging around are the kinds of people who are more n normal and intimate. And I, when I say normal, I don't mean normal. I just mean like normal in my, in my circle. Um, and what, whereas there are others who are just, I, I can't connect with them, which is why I came up with it. Like when I speak to you, I, I come with a presumption that, okay, we all agree that there's this kind of person. Now, how do I deal with this? You know, um, I'm not I thinking. Just think, of, I like, think, yeah, I sorry. think people, people change a lot. So especially in the early twenties. So like, I don't know. I don't. I guess I just don't agree. I I don't agree with like writing people off. That doesn't mean that you're like uh, that. I think you're obligated to live with them if you don't want to. I'm just saying. It might be worth pursuing what you want with these people first before giving up. Okay. Um, uh, okay, but say I bring it up. Okay, and then you'll say, okay, yeah. just bring it up again, again. Um, and okay, and then um, okay. Well, the thing is, once I do, once I do ask them, then I won't have the option of like telling, like telling them, oh, by the way, I don't want to live with you for whatever reason, because they'll think, okay, he's already talked to us about not enjoying our conversations so clearly 
if he doesn't want to live with us, then it's for that. Yeah, then, I think there's probably a way to say that that's not like friendship destroying, but just like I'm looking oh. for more. I'm looking for a more emotional. Like, if you want to, fr you can frame yourself as the weird one. You could be like, I'm just looking for something that is more emotionally open and more like emotional household or more intimate household than you seem to want. And I feel like it's going to turn into a thing where I, I feel like we're not having like real close conversations and like it sounds like that might not be what you want so like let's if we're going to be buddies we can be buddies but I'm, I'm trying to live with people who i can like be more open with okay and then hope they know what that means well if they feel like they don't know what it means you could you can explain it hmm. i mean i, might I guess come back i guess I guess I would just be i will be less focused on trying to manage their response and more on just like advocating for what it is you want and like just make sure that like you can't that you're not going to get it and like you there I I think if you push for it enough there will come a point where they will be like oh like I'm a, I you're right we probably shouldn't live together that would be weird or where they're like oh you know what that does sound nice I I I've been me I've been meaning to work on that myself oh I see Okay, I can imagine that world. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess so. I don't need a response to the second answer because the first answer kind of ruins, you know, whether or not I should. Whatever. Anyways, um, I think I think that's good. Uh, good advice. I'll uh, pursue that. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you for calling in. Bye. Bye. Another caller's life, all fixed. Uh, I feel like there's something I was going to say about this female horniness panel. I'm getting excited about it. But there's something I was going to say specifically. Oh, it was it was juicy too. The female horniness panel. I don't remember what it was. Uh yeah, yeah, we're going to have a panel on female horniness. The problem of female horniness, how to deal with it, what it is. How we talk about it, how we think about it, how we feel about it. Someone asked why it was a problem. What is specifically the problem? It's not. It's a non-specific problem. I mean, horniness itself is a problem. It's like an unresolved. It's like it's an issue. And then there's and then there's how do we do we facilitate the resolution of it? I don't think we do. We don't seem to. We don't like it when we don't like it when women are horny. We don't like it when women are not horny. We don't like how they act when they're horny. We don't like how they act when they're not horny. I we I think Yeah. It's a lot to untangle. Uh uh You're really good at giving advice, Mr. Girl. Have you thought about offering coaching? That's a good idea. Updates on Dr. K. Uh, I mailed the amended complaint with a thumb drive to the medical board. I am in talks with some various professionals, lawyers, journalists 
I am trying to hand us off to the professional community or various professional communities. Uh, and yeah, I'm just trying to pass pass it over to them because I think I've I've done my part here of kind of my educational thing here. And I think now the professionals need to understand what the fuck is happening over here on Twitch and they because they don't and they need to the word needs to spread and they move a little bit slower, but that's what I'm working on. Whose panel is it? It's my panel. Sounds like we just hate women. Yeah, that's part of it. Could be a big part of it. They're never horny at the right time. Right. Like ideally, women would be horny. Women would always be slightly less horny than I am at the moment that I am. Because it's also off-putting when you're a little horny and you make a move and then uh, women are excessively, suddenly horny. That's a little overwhelming. So it's not even just that you want them to be horny when you're horny. You want them to be a manageable level of horny at the right time and in the right way. The advice that you're not willing to give on stream because it feels too close to therapy, would you give that advice to a close friend? Um, I'm. It's not, no, no, no. I don't think giving advice is part of therapy. If I were a therapist, if I were doing therapy, what I would have said to the previous caller is I would have found out what are, where did his ideas about what closeness is come from? What I would, I would, I would want to know about his other close relationships. And then I would form a close relationship with him and I would learn how intimacy works for him through our own intimacy. And through that, um, without me giving any advice, advice is like a shortcut without me giving any advice, he would eventually come to his own conclusions through our intimate relationships and the uh, in, intimate relationship and the tools that he develops in that intimate relationship, he would learn how to do all the things I just suggested that he do. He would he would know how to ask me for intimacy. He would know how to set boundaries with me. He would know how to navigate the, the questions that he's asking. And then he would learn to apply them to his own life without me ever suggesting that he do so. That to me, that's what therapy is. It's not would it, it's not giving advice. It's like actually learning how to be close to other people in a safe place with um, somebody who's like walking you through it and taking care of you. Whereas advice is much more, um, you know, giving you some stuff to try on your own and then showing you the door. I told my therapist about Dr. K and he was shocked and said he would watch your video. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> I got an email <clears throat> from somebody who was like, I thought, you'd, I thought you'd appreciate this. I showed... Uh, I showed my mother, who is a therapist, your Dr. K video, and this was her response. And it was just this like long email about how completely fucking horrified she is. I uh, once we just got to tell more professionals about what's going on and they will all be completely fucking horrified. Is this true? Melina and Destiny use an app. They click I'm horny and it lets the other know. If they're horny too, they click yes and meet. Is that that's is that true? I I think I might have heard of that. But wait. I feel like the app shouldn't tell the other person unless you also click it. Can you set it to do that where I because I I really don't like it when a a woman wants to have sex and I don't want to. I I wouldn't want to know. So I would like it so that if I'm horny, then on, and only then do I have to be made aware of the presence of female horniness in my house, which is like, um, it's like radioactive material. Wrong, Mr. Girl. They have one of those. It's called a phone. No, 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 no. 
Women use sex as power. Men just jerk off. Wait, when is the panel? I don't know. I need to find out who's going to be on it. <sighs> okay. Baby, I'm ready for the next one. Hello? Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Does my voice sound good? Volume good? Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm probably going to call you, you Max because I feel we were talking about you know, personal shit with somebody a Mr. Girl. Uh, my name is that, Drew. That's, I don't know if it matters to you. but Okay. That's, that's understandable. Up. Okay. Yeah. So the way I want to go about this um basically i could talk to anyone that's not uh in direct correlation you know with my life and i could probably get similar perspective to what you're gonna give me but uh excuse I'm just kinda, me well i just you know i i don't i don't know i figured i don't know, I, if, I don't I just, know if that's true now i'm gonna have to give some off the wall fucking bizarre response maybe i don't know i'm just trying to basically everyone i've talked to about this is within my close family and friend circle so it's kind of the answers they give me, I feel like, are kind of, uh, there's so much in my best interest that they might not be in my best interest. Do you know what I mean by that? Um, you mean like they're immoral? No, it's not immoral. It's that it's like they think, oh, well, if you did this uh, and you you acted in this way, or, I mean, it's about school primarily, education. And if the, they're basically saying if you stick with it and if you stick where you are, you, you might have the best, most predictable outcome. But I'm thinking that if I stick with that, I'm going to be uh, unhappy in the end. How is that in your best interest? Well, I guess because they see it as I'm not really... Uh, maybe I haven't presented my... Uh, how How unhappy i am enough but i think they see it as you know just 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 keep on trucking you know but basically i have a, i have kind of a, a diatribe a whole list of uh basically my my i kind of have to tell a bit of a life story almost uh to get to where i want to hopefully it doesn't take too long I, I've, I've thought about this tried to make it succinct um but uh most so should i just start yeah <laughs> Okay, so basically, uh, when I grew up, I don't know, first, uh, the first school or any kind of education I went to uh, was a, a, a very high-end private school, uh, very expensive Catholic private school, um, and my parents could afford it because they were, uh, they both made a lot of money. Uh, I would say upper middle class, maybe teetering on the edge of lower upper class, um, I mean, this pa past tense made a lot of money. Yeah, so I'm gonna get okay. into that a little bit. Okay. So, uh, I think collectively they made. I, I've 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 actually looked into some of it, but I think they made about like three fifty to four hundred k. I don't know if that is. That's probably yeah. That's probably upper lower lower. That's yeah. Probably around there. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting it's getting up there. Yeah. So they made a good amount of money, um, and they were able to send me to a, a very very high-end school um and i went there and i did pretty awful up until about fourth grade so the i mean i don't know how the grading system would work back then i don't remember it uh but you know i got i did pretty bad in school and you know i messed around and uh i didn't really care um and my parents took note of this and i think when they got divorced it got even worse and i was around seven years old and I just, I really, I really didn't care. Um, and so they, uh, they sent me, say sent. I hate that. I, I've been trying to, this is the main crux. This is my, uh, my confession a bit. I, I didn't really have a good 
confession, so it's more of just a, a story that I'm going to call a confession for the flow of the show. Um, so they, they signed me up, put me in a program that every week I'd go to this place, and I think I can name drop it because of the it's it's out of business now because of, they've got multiple lawsuits because of they uh, uh it was basically based on pseudoscience and they were selling it to to parents who, who felt like they needed uh, a place to send their kids uh it was a place called brain balance and uh yeah. it was a it was a very uh scary place for a, a kid because and this is probably why they shut down basically it was a uh, the whole idea of the place was that your left and right brain could be imbalanced and that this place <laughs> if you went here and you did sit-ups with these people and then played computer games uh they would rebalance your brain uh so they would uh <laughs> you know they would they would they would show you things and then uh and your parents could watch the whole time uh, when i say it it sounds like a mental institute it really wasn't um they had you know nice lobby music and they uh, there were no chain link fences uh but so i went in there and i'd go behind the uh behind a, a one-way uh mirror and my my dad and my mom could watch me or whatever and i'd i'd do sit-ups i'd do push-ups i'd uh <laughs> i'd do whatever they told me to do and i was about you know eight years old at the time and they'd uh and they'd have me to play these weird games where i'd 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 click on you know boxes and stuff uh and and this was every, I think, Tuesday or Thursday, one of those tea days. Uh, and and they'd send me here. And then, I don't know, once every two months, I'd take a test. Uh, and this test would determine how balanced my brain is. And they'd put, like, this big thing on my head, which looked like a, a, a metal strainer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, they put this big <laughs> strainer thing on my head. Uh, and, and, you know, as a kid... Uh, maybe I saw a movie or something, and I don't know. I don't believe it anymore. There's no way. There's no way. I swear, when I'd get an answer wrong, it would shock me. But I think I was just being uh, an overdramatic kid who definitely didn't want to go to this place, and I was just lying. Uh, but you know, that was. It was a weird device. <laughs> I don't. I don't really know what the point of it. I guess. I guess it was measuring some kind of brain waves. Uh, but uh, so I'd go in there, and that part was in a room with. It was. It was in a room with no windows and no one-way mirror. They'd take me back there, and then I'd come up. It, it, was, it, was, an odd, it was an odd place. You know, it was probably best that they got shut down. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd go in there, and I'd, I'd take these tests, and I got really good in school. Like, really good. Like, all straight A's. After, straight your, brain, A's after your brain was balanced. After my brain was balanced, yeah, 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 yeah. After the okay. after the, the the procedure, uh, but so they 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 balance my brain, uh, okay. And you know one thing also, uh, this place was uh, really messed me up, confidence wise because, I I when I'd go in there into the um, into the waiting room and stuff, the only other people who went to this were, uh, very special needs, very, like, nonverbal most of them, <laughs> um, so I. <laughs> I'd go in there and I'd be in there and and there would just be kids who didn't speak, you know. And it was it was it was an odd environment for someone like me who I for years thought that I was special needs because I was like, oh well, you know, why would I be sent to this facility if if not? So I yeah. I uh yeah. So I, I, I went there and I got out of it, had good grades, but I was really fucked up. Like I was messed up in my head. I uh uh, like I, I didn't really keep any friends. I had no self confidence. Uh, you know, I got really fat. You know, like a like an eight year old chubby <laughs> fat, but you know, fat. And uh, and so, uh, uh, so yeah, I was probably like nine by this point. By this point, they're my parents were like, okay, we kind of fucked them up with the with the the shock therapy. So let's send them to regular therapy. And, Wait, do your, and, did your parents believe that that you were being shocked, or you convinced them no, of this? I, you convince yourself. I, I pretty much I convinced I don't know. I don't know if I ever got through to them. They 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 knew something weird they, either way, shock or not shock, it was still it was still a horrible environment. 
for for a kid i'd say but okay i think i i yeah i'm a, I, like i said i don't believe that it was shock therapy there is no way but some part there's but you have a memory of it even though you don't believe yeah it. yeah yeah i have i have something okay. uh yeah i i i, I claimed it was but i was a, a dumb kid who wanted to get out of his brain being right balanced. right so sure so <laughs> who wouldn't okay so then they sent you to normal therapy yeah normal normal therapy because and, you, and, you grew you got fat and you didn't have friends and I didn't have friends, yeah. And I had okay. no self confidence. Before this, I was just kind of like, I, I didn't have. I was, I mean, I was seven years old, so confidence is kind of a, a weird thing. But uh, when you're a kid, but I was like, um, like, <laughs> <laughs> I could, I, I believed in myself, and I didn't really care. I kind of was at a neutral confidence. But then after brain balance, I was like, I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. Every like any chance I could get, I would talk about it for some reason, you know. And that kind of translated to to my uh, showing of confidence when you're eight okay. years old because there's no okay so they sent me to normal therapy i yeah. go in there and uh, she, she did pretty well uh you know i'd say for a therapist she told me i was uh sensitive uh like she pulled out all these uh cards this is a funny story uh, she pulled out all these cards and uh she's like oh i've got this fire and see when he gets into issues he gets really angry and he explodes i've got this uh i've got this teardrop when they see things, they always cry. I don't know. And then she pulled out this piece of glass or a glass drawing or whatever with a face. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I think you're like this one. When you get in issues, you break easily and you, you're sensitive. And I just started bawling and saying, I'm not sensitive. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Which ironic. It was pretty ironic. Uh, and I think yeah. it's pretty funny. It's a good story. But yeah, she, she told me I was sensitive and I cried about it, which, you know, in, in retrospect, that could, that could be a, a good little sketch. Uh, but... <laughs> So I I got past therapy and I got in, and overall I'd say you know uh, I got balanced but fucked up mentally, in some ways socially, and then I got fixed by a therapist, so I was in a pretty good state. And so then from I don't know uh, what grade are we in now? I don't know from when I was ten to when I was like seventeen. You know I did pretty good in school. I got maybe minimum like one or two C's and the rest of them were probably A's and B's, you know, and, and all the way up until, uh, uh, I was older and I, this is going to play in later. I should have explained this earlier. Basically my parents, uh, they don't make nearly what they used to. So, so, uh, my, when they got divorced, you know, things kind of went downhill like it, like it, you know, does for a lot of people. Uh, and, you know, my mom started drinking and my dad, uh, he moved to, uh, Pennsylvania and, uh, like, I don't, I don't see him, uh, so much. And he, he started a business which failed and he went bankrupt. And so now we're not making nearly, or my family's really not making nearly as much money as they, they used to. Um, uh, like I'm on, we're on food stamps and stuff like that. Um, but I did pretty good, uh, up until I was like 17, at which point I started to think about this and I started to think about what I'm doing and, uh, and, and where I'm going, uh, mostly through online school. And I just started, I was like, I'm, I'm just not happy, you know? And, and I, I, I wondered where that was coming from. I was like, well, why am I not happy? Why? Cause I always thought myself a pretty happy person. Um, and then came the opportunity because of my, good grades or whatever i got to graduate early okay. um and it kind of sounds like i'm flexing in this conversation i'm really not okay uh, i'm i'm not trying to flex or anything it's just it's part of the story i'm sorry <laughs> just, uh, no, so, just, just tell uh, the story it's a, yeah. it's a, <laughs> so, don't don't worry about it yeah yeah so i i i got and i i got to go to college early okay and it's the community yeah. it's like a it's a program and you can sign up and get selected and uh Basically, I only did it because I wanted to stay in online school, or I only signed up for it because I, I, I didn't want to see people, I guess. Um, because at the time, I mean, I was, I, uh, I started online school halfway into my sophomore year, and now I'm a senior. Uh, yeah. So, eh, how long is that? I don't know, a few years. Um, so, I, I got into high school, and I got in online school and then I wanted to stay in online school because I didn't want to see people uh, so then I got uh, into college early and I got to pick my classes so 
so for, for all intents and purposes, I'm in, I'm in college. Uh, and I got to pick my classes. And I got to pick my major. And I got to pick everything. And I decided uh, I was going to do general STEM off of the recommendation of my father. Uh, and he told me, yeah, go into general STEM. Do that. That'll be fun. Uh, and so I got into it. And I did a, so uh, a semester of it, only online school, because, you know, that was my whole uh, plan. And I realized how disconnected I felt from everyone at first, because I didn't, when I was doing online school, everyone was in online school. So I was like, ah, whatever, you know, uh, this is fine. This is just how we live now. Uh, but then once I got into college and I was the only one doing online school and I saw everyone else, I started to feel really disconnected from, from people, uh, you know, my friends and stuff. And uh, uh, I got, I, I was in college and I did that semester and it didn't go bad. I, I did okay. I think I got, you know, normally good grades. Um, but it wasn't until this semester, so I'm in a new semester, where I now have to take an in-person class. And basically, I, I, I got into this in-person class and I, I, I got there and I sat down. And I started looking around me at my peers, at the, at the people there. And, and I watched them as they paid attention to class and were happy to do so. And I realized, holy crap, these people actually like what they're doing. And, and this whole rush of just, oh my, this for the last... I don't know how many years I have been so scared of going back to brain balance that I've been forcing myself to get good grades, not because I care about the subjects I'm learning, but because I, I, I'm, go, you don't want the shocker put back on. Yeah, I don't want the shock therapy. Right. And it's like, and I see these people and I see how happy they are. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, what have I been missing out on? These people actually like what they're doing. And then I go, wait, I hate this. I hate general STEM. I hate math. I hate science. And it's like, I've hated it this whole time. I've just been lying and saying I like it. So, issue is, yeah. I'm in a semester. I'm locked in, taking classes. I'm hating every second of it. Uh, you know, now that I, I, I've realized I, I've been awoken, you know, uh, it's like, it's not the same anymore. I can't sit through it. I sit there and I just, uh, I want, I want to get out, but I can't really. And when I ask most people, especially my parents, they tell me, well, it's only 11 weeks. Sit through it. It's not that bad. Uh, or 11 weeks left or something like that. There's, there's not so much left. Uh, and then they're like, oh, and then we can figure out something. And, uh, you know, here, here's a little mini confession as well, you know, so I can, I can add to the show. I basically, I kind of lied, I think, looking back on it. I was emotional uh, at the time. I told my dad, basically, that I didn't say it out, outward, but I basically said it makes me want to kill myself. And I think that was really irresponsible. Because I don't think I'm going to kill myself. I don't think I'm even near a point of killing myself. I think I just really don't like the situation I'm in. And mm -hmm. I think that was to get a, across to him because he didn't really, he didn't seem to, to care. He was like, well, just get through it. What the hell? Why, why are you being such a pussy? Uh, and, 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 you know, maybe he's right. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I told him, yeah, so I, I told him that. And, and he kind of, uh, yeah, he just, he just, he told me to get over it basically. Uh, uh for to so he didn't really care either. He knew that, which he probably did, that I'm, I'm not going to really kill myself or he, uh, uh, he just thought that, well, I guess that's really the only other option other than he doesn't care, which I, I think he cares. He's, he's a, he's a good dad, you know, he, uh, uh, but um well it's it's possible that he um he thinks that's just how life is that's true um well also this whole school thing like like the way that you felt when yeah. you saw your classmates enjoying 
stem and you realize that your life doesn't have to be a miserable, lonely slog. Uh -huh. I don't know that your dad has ever had that moment. So it's possible that when you say it makes me want to kill myself, he's the thinking, well, yeah, that's life. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I haven't really thought about that. I don't know how his school experience was. I don't think he ever graduated, but he wants me to graduate really bad. And I think that's part of it because I don't think he ever graduated. So he sees me as, you know, like, oh, he's got to do it. That's my son. Uh, but uh, so and and also this whole uh, food stamps and uh, uh, school thing has made me really want to get a job. And I've thought about and I've mentioned dropping out and getting a job. Mm -hmm. And that's been a real big point of contention. They really, that's the last thing they want me to do. It's either uh, drop out, go uh, drop out, and I guess, I don't know, look for something to do until next semester. But it's like a job is for some reason just out of the question. Um, uh, and it's like, I don't, I'm not interested in school right now. I, I think I, if, I could, if I could have my way, and it wouldn't negatively affect anyone else. I would I would drop out. I would get a full-time job for, I don't know, a year or two. Figure out my life and then go back to college. Figure out what I want to do. Because, you know, that's an issue. Um, but, sadly, everyone I ask. And my parents and everyone tell me, no, that's an that's a awful idea. And maybe they're right. I mean, my dad told me, if I drop out... It will ruin my future, and he's not sure if he'll pay for me to go back to even community. So it's like, I I, I have to. I feel a very uh, you know, uh, large pressure to stay where I am, but I don't want to stay where I am because I hate it. Yeah. So that's kind of a uh, where I'm at. You're asking you're asking me what what I think you should do. Yeah. I think you should go to therapy. Ha <laughs> ha. True. Go back. You. <laughs> Not back. Just go. Like you. I don't agree with your. A, a lot of the way you talk about your life is very like. Um, uh, disorganized for sure but also feels like you're drawing a like causal relationships between things that it seems like your narrative of your life is really mixed up with your parents. Like the idea that brain balance got your grades good, but then they got bad and then you had to go to therapy and then that fixed you for a while. It just feels like there's a lot more going on that you don't seem super aware of. And it's almost like you're talking about yourself kind of the way parents think of their kids, like like kind of hands off parents who don't really understand what's going on with their kids are like, oh, well, he started like doing, you know, um, playing basketball. And ever since he started playing basketball, he's been really happy. Like it's like just it just feels very like broad strokes and like you I think you need to um, get to know yourself a little better. Yeah. I see that. I mean, I think it is disorganized, but I think that's probably just part of my lack of preparation and in, in, in for this. Uh, I should have wrote stuff down. Uh, I don't know that. I, th I don't think it's normal to um, or ideal to need to prepare a written essay in order to tell a story about your own like school experience. It, it, yeah. it honestly, it's like talking to you. It feels like you are confused for sure. Yeah, I'm very confused. And you're sensitive as you, as you noted. And I yeah, think that their therapist told me. Right. And like you're, you're the people are giving you advice are not taking that sensitivity into account. And so I think what you're asking me to do is like, given that I believe your feelings are real and that they matter, what would my advice be? Um, because it sounds like a lot of the advice you're getting from people is about money. It's about their own, their own relationship with money. If they're still making $400,000 a year, it probably wouldn't matter if you dropped out cause you can just go back. 
Yeah. And now well, the and now yeah. money is being th- used as like a threat or like if you if you don't finish the semester, I'm never paying for you to go to college again, which um, might be an empty threat, might be a real threat. But either way, it, it it that that also it you know that's making it about money. It's like and the food stamps. You wanting mm-hmm. to go get a job because you don't want to be broke. It feels like your families feels like your parents are feeling bad about getting divorced and they're feeling bad about um, not being able to pay for you to stop this in the middle of the semester if you hate what you're doing and it also feels like they're they are not yeah as I said not not really weighing your emotional experience very highly in their like evaluation of how to handle this yeah I'm just I think I'm terrified of disappointing them like I don't I can't think of a time where I ever really severely disappointed my parents I've always been pretty just you know, whatever they want me to do is what I'll do. And usually it's been pretty easy because I was just a, a high schooler or whatever. I mean, I just kind of followed what everyone told me. But now it's like I have to make decisions in my life. And I yeah, I, I, I think it's time to start making your own decisions. And like, so it could be that um, the right decision for you financially and logistically is to finish out the semester. But it might be that the best decision for you psychologically is to start disappointing your parents now. Or it might be that that, you know, or they might conflict with each other. It might be that you have an emotional need to quit and a financial need to stay. And I don't know that there is a right answer because when your psychological health is pit up against like your bank account, that's a really fucking hard decision to make because being broke is also bad for your psychological health. And, um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have an answer, but my only, my, all I would say is like, I think those are more factors to look into your sensitivity and, and treating your, and like, if some part of you saying like, please don't make me go back to another day of this, like. I don't know. You don't have to do what that part of you is saying, but I think you should listen to it at least and like hear it out. And, um, yeah. and like, yeah, you don't want to, you also don't want to throw your money away. Yeah. It's uh, the only thing I'm sure of is that you should go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm positive of that. Well, the problem is that therapy is kind of expensive. It is, <laughs> but I think that, um, I think it would be a worthwhile, investment even see, if even I, if you're even if you're on food stamps yeah see if i i did that i would that would definitely be a uh get a job then start going to therapy because i mean i can i couldn't put that financial burden on either of my parents fuck them <laughs> that might be the, the answer i don't know uh, I, with going to therapy, I think it might be you. You you break it, you buy it. <laughs> True. 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 Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I just think it's gonna be really hard to. I. I mean, honestly, I would go. I would try to start ASAP and like, and and work this out with your therapist. I think if you can get a therapist soon. And then you can make this decision with somebody who's truly in your corner. Cause like, like you can tell me your life story and I can try to advocate for you, but I can't, I don't have to deal with it if you're wrong or if I'm wrong, yeah. if I oversee you in this conversation, coming to some conclusion, it doesn't matter to me what happens only in some vague abstract way. If I find, if somebody in the discord or you say, Hey, I fucked up. My life is ruined. I'll, I'll say, wow, I'll, I'll have a moment of like, wow, what, what, that's really profound that like, I feel so bad that, yeah. Anyway, on to my, like, on to my next thing. Uh, but like a therapist is actually going to be professionally and emotionally invested in what happens to you. And I think that you could really use that. Maybe. I just feel like, 
I've talked to people who are, I mean, my friends who have an emotional, that's why I kind of, I thought talking to you would be interesting because your perspective is probably more objective than those people's. It, is happiness more important or is, is, you know, possibly your future more important? You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that they can be weighed against each other. I think they're intertwined and that's, um, it's really complicated. I think you, I think you, I think, I think you need somebody who is not your friend, who is a therapist, who is advocating for you and taking care of you and helping you oversee this because your friends, um, are, are, they have their own things that they want for you and for them. And I'm not saying you shouldn't talk to them. You absolutely should, but it's a different thing of they're not quite going to be able to provide the space. And like, you need a lot of space. Like that's another thing that's become clear to me in the course of this conversation. You really want to lay out all the pieces of this and see them all and try to put them all together. And like, I don't think you can do that in this conversation. And I think, I don't know if you can do that with a friend either. I think you need somebody who re who wants to sit there with you for, you know, dozens of hours over the course of like months and like really get into it. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, I respect your advice and it's good <laughs> advice. It's just, but, but getting a therapist is kind of out of the question for me at the moment until I feel I make a decision because you can say, I know from your perspective, it seems a lot easier to probably say, well, tell them you need a therapist. But to me, that's, that is probably financial suicide for mainly my mom, who is my, you know, my main provider, uh, because uh, yeah, just the idea that you feel like you're supposed to sacrifice your mental health for your mom's, uh, financial being says a lot. Maybe, maybe it does. So I implore you to prioritize your health. That's my advice. Yeah. That's good advice. And I'll I'll try to take it into account. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I'll talk to you probably never again, but that's fine, you know. That's the point. Probably, I think. All right. Goodbye. Bye. I think destiny's net good argument is beneficial. <clears throat> it's, I think it's terrible at justifying literally anything ever and should never be used. Wait, why are you saying it's beneficial? Beneficial means good. What do I think about it? Uh, I think it has... A, with regard to medical ethics, I think it's got a hole in it where somebody, somebody came up with a good counter argument to this. <clears throat> um, I think it was in the chat. They said that net good applies, but it applies across medical ethics as a whole. So it's net good for all therapists. Oh, I think Avi said this. I think he said it to Destiny. I think they said he said it on my stream last week. But I think he was saying that the counter to the net good argument is that the net good for all therapy patients is to hold people to the rules really uh, strictly. And people who use the net good argument to defend Dr. K are usually just applying it to Dr. K himself and Twitch itself. 
And so I understand if you're in the Twitch community wanting to do that. I guess I think I think and I think that's where Destiny's coming to it from. Although it seems like from what I know, I don't I don't know if he's even watched the video. He has not he hasn't I don't I don't think he's even seen it. So um if you're just asking broadly about the net good argument. I wouldn't call it Destiny's net good argument because he's not really making it. Um He's definitely mentioned it, but I would say that there is definitely a pro Dr. K net good defense that gets brought up a lot. And I would say it's um, it's from a very Twitch sphere focused perspective. And that perspective sees something they perceive as good happening with a little bad or iffiness. And they want to isolating that Twitch sphere does, they they basically are saying medical ethics should be different in our little world. And what I see is medical ethics protecting um, the public from bad behavior from doctors and therapists. And I see a pocket where those ethics are not applied and where doctors can go and abuse people, mistreat people, and exploit people. And they are not beholden to the rules because professionals don't understand what's happening. Nobody is watching it, even though it's in public. Nobody who can can stop it. And the people who can stop it don't even seem to understand it. And I want to shine a light on that area. But I, I see how from the perspective, it, if you are super pro Dr. K or, or want Twitch to be its own little universe, then that light just feels like it's it's destroying something good. Basically, you think Dr. K did something to Reckful, so you are on a warpath. That's another way to frame it, and that's not. Uh, that's also true. It's not just Reckful. I think I think he is damaging you when you watch his interviews. It it paints a picture of therapy and mental health that is unrealistic and not true it's like watching porn it's like getting sex ed from watching porn that's what dr k's videos are healthy gamer is porn it's not real it gives you unreal it's fake it gives you unrealistic expectations like yeah the bodily fluids are real but the interaction is fake staged and uh in most cases bankrupt AOE damage instead of AOE healing, yeah. Hey, when do you predict your fallout with Destiny will happen? Is it this year or next year? I don't think I will have a fallout with Destiny. I don't see why I would. I see a lot of people talking about that, but... Um it seems like most of his fallouts with people come from the other person not being able to stand something he said about them. And I, um, I can see myself getting mad at Destiny, but I don't see I don't see a I don't see that fallout happening. I haven't watched much of this show, but from what I've seen, you always tell people to see a therapist. Have there been times where you haven't recommended someone to see a therapist because you didn't think it was necessary? Yeah, I think the first three callers this today, I did not. It's a, it's not yeah not necessary. It's not that I'm if if I don't say you should see a therapist, that's not me saying you shouldn't see a therapist. It just doesn't seem relevant to the thing that you're calling about. I guess. Do you think it's possible to become so numb to getting off to porn you start getting off to people who are fully clothed? It hasn't happened to me. And boy, I've tested it. I've tested it. Female horniness. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay. Uh, 
Baby, one more. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, um, wait, let me mute stream. Um, Can you uh, hear me fine? Yes. Okay. Just to f disclosure, you're a mod in the discord. Yes. But you got in line before I said no more mods in on the show. Yes. So you are possibly the last mod who will ever be on this show. I think there might be one more, but oh, it's like Christ. a, it was like a six week backlog when I, I got in. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I just want to disclose that so that people know. Um, but you and I have, we've had some interactions in the Discord, but we've never spoken before, I don't think. Uh, no, may, no, I think very limited. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, let's do this. Um. Okay, so I'm kind of on here for a confession. It's kind of like a... I mean, kind of like the last caller where it's kind of a life story. I can get through it pretty quickly, I think. Um, okay. I don't know if I am going to ask you any advice, um, but I might ask what you think. Um, okay. So when I was five, uh, my dad kind of walked out and stuff. And then my mom was left with like three kids. Uh, she eventually met who would be my stepdad for up until today. Um and he had two daughters as well. Um, how do I... He, he was not the kindest man. He seemed pretty cool at first because he would let me play like on his Genesis and stuff. And I would play Mortal Kombat. And it was like, oh, hey, you're actually kind of cool. I've never played a video game before. Um, then I found out he was pretty uh, susceptible to rage and uh he was pretty abusive in general um kind of belittling me and my siblings and whatnot and then uh kind of behind the scenes when uh i was eight years old i used to hang out with my cousins a lot on my mother's side and at some point in time uh, i was eight years old my cousin she was 10 years old she was kind of exploring herself and whatnot and she had uh, asked me to participate with her. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to give any details because I'm sure that's like uh, TOS. Um, yeah. But uh, that happened. Okay. And it happened a couple of times. Uh, and I wasn't very keen on it. I didn't know what the heck was going on, to be honest. Um, but later on, I was kind of exploring myself too because I mean, I felt like something in me got activated. Uh, and so like two years later when I was 10 and one of my stepsisters was a, I tried the same thing and try is a very important word. Cause I didn't actually do the thing. Uh, but I tried, um, and then, like, two years later, you know what LimeWire is, right? Yeah. Okay. I was using that to search up porn, but I'm 12 years old. I, I know that, like, 18 and up is the thing, but I was, like, I thought that 18 was, like, old. Um, so I was looking stuff more uh, my age group. Yeah. And my stepdad found that, uh, kind of, like, in viewing... Uh, my history and stuff i didn't know anything about that i'm just a kid and uh he basically looked at me like it was weird that i would try to find stuff like that and uh it felt like i didn't know it at the time but it pretty much just felt like overnight that i became uh a pedophile which i knew that i wasn't but um well i mean when you're 12 like everybody's a pedophile yeah um <laughs> but 
but I, I think at this point it was really, uh, he was super sensitive to that because I think at some point in time he found out what happened between, uh, me and his daughter in private. And, uh, nobody knows about when I was touched when I was eight. Uh, but I, I think most, if not all of my family knows about my incident. Um, and it definitely played into how I was treated throughout my life. Uh, for instance, uh, having a job, uh, I work in trade and so does my stepfather. And I remember working, uh, with him. I actually had to leave that job because, uh, he, I couldn't, it was never explicitly said to me, but I could tell everybody knew the story. I knew that everybody kind of respected me because they respected my stepfather, but they didn't really respect me when he was around. It was sort of like everybody was in on the game of like, it's okay to pick on me and it's okay to admonish me. The story being both pieces. Not the part when I was eight, but the part about me looking up stuff and about, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those two That's what with his daughter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, like, the the biggest indicators was that, and then uh, one time, I was really kind to everybody, and uh, so there was this one guy who would call me privately, but uh, to make sure that I was okay if I was down, and this was at my stepfather's workplace, uh, he, every time he would call me, he would be like, but hey, just make sure, uh, don't let anybody know that I was talking to you. And then he would like hang up, but he, he was like really respectful. Otherwise You've been like emotionally blacklisted. Yeah. Um, and I guess it never really bothered me, but the thing is, is I have a daughter and she's nine years old. And, uh, last year I got custody of her. She's autistic. She doesn't really have a high mental capacity. So if I was the person uh, that my stepfather is making me out to be to other people, you would, you could imagine that my daughter is somebody who is very susceptible to abuse. If somebody were to do that to her. Mm -hmm. And I guess my biggest issue with him is that I don't think he actually believes I am the person he makes me out to be to other people, but he's willing to say it because if he wasn't, if he thought that I was actually a pedophile, I feel like he would have stepped in or my mother would have stepped in or somebody would have stepped in to protect my daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I mean, cause when I got custody of her, I, I mean, she was eight and I mean, that's the exact same age his daughter was, you know, like that's, it's almost poetic in a way. In a way. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, and uh, I don't know how to tell my girlfriend this, I, I want to. Um, I tested it on two of my best friends that I only talked to like once a year since high school. And they were very receptive to it and kind of understood my side and were very respectful about it. But yeah. um, it sounds like it's yeah. confusing for you. E yes. I mean, I, I, uh, speaking from my own experience, I can tell you that having a large group of people act like you're a pedophile is confusing. Yeah. Um, regardless of like what your sexuality is, I think it is a it's a very weird experience. So it, it sounds like talking to people about it is like good for you. I mean, I, I think I think it can be good. Uh, it's the family aspect that I don't even know how to broach because I notice like. Um, my daughter, I think she would benefit if she was around other kids and she is through her therapy, but, mm -hmm. um, like I notice, like even, uh, even family members who I know, trust me, just do not entertain the idea of my daughter being alone with me, with them, you know? So uh, it's like, it, yeah, I feel like you got to yeah. shut this shit down. Yeah. Um, right. Like the idea that you can't be trusted around your own daughter 
because you were sexual with a child when you were 10 is really dumb. Like that doesn't really make any sense. It just, it just seems like your, your stepfather is making this all about himself. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, def it definitely feels that way too. Like, uh, with me telling you about how I wanted to tell my girlfriend, we've been having issues, but it's sort of like unrelated stuff. But mm -hmm. I told her I'd go to therapy, and so I'm supposed to be calling a therapist. I, I actually was supposed to on Friday, but my daughter had school off. Um, I want to go to therapy for this, too, because nice. uh, this is really a bigger issue um, yeah. than I think my relationship as a whole. But I've not even told her, so I, um, I'm afraid that when I tell her, she's going to feel the same kind of pressure on herself that I feel on me all of the time. Um, I don't, I, I, uh, I, I can see why that's scary, but I think you're being gaslit a bit here. In what sense? Like, the like idea, about, just about the, me just being the idea, a pedophile? Just, uh, it's almost like pedophilia is uh, a secondary accusation it seems like the real thing is that your stepfather thinks you're still 12 yeah i've actually had conversations about this with people uh in uh how they're they're basically looking at because i'm 29 right now they're looking yeah. at the 29 year old as if that's the person who touched the eight-year-old Yes, right. And it's like uh most I don't I don't know what percentage of kids get into some kind of sexual experimentation. But even the way you are saying 8-year-old, you make it sound like you were like 15 when when it happened. But at, like a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old are effectively the same age. Like it's not um I, it just seems like you're, 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 my sense is that you're being gaslit into thinking that to like, into almost not knowing what age you are. And I agree. Therapy is a really good idea. And that will, I think be really grounding and anchoring. But I think that, um, I, I suspect that the more people you tell about this in your like trusted close circle, the more sanity we, you'll kind of let into this because it's a weird thing where your stepfather's telling everybody he fucking knows, apparently, which is, um, uh, might be literally illegal to do. I, I, I don't think you're in a workplace. I don't know what state you live in, but I don't, I'm, I assume there's some law that says that when you have somebody working with you or for you, you can't go around the office talking about what kind of porn they downloaded on LimeWire when they were 12. I, I assume that's some kind of sexual harassment or something. It's it's fucking bizarre, but because um, he's good at at what he's doing or something, it it somehow turned into you being the weird one when what he's doing is um, some kind of psychological sexual abuse toward you. And I think that the more people, and I know that because it involves your childhood sexuality, it it makes you feel like a deviant or something, but I, I think you're being made to feel that way. And I think that um, the more people you kind of like let in on your side, I think you'll, you're going to get a strong supportive response of like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Um, I assume. So that's just a prediction. Like, don't bet your whole sanity on that. But right. I, uh, it, I mean, it just imagine being him. Like, ima like imagine you, you have a kid you're supposed to take care of because you're the new stepfather and, you, and you're, you've moved in and you're like, right? And like somehow this ends up with you telling all of his coworkers about what porn he downloaded when he was 12. It's just a fucking strange, like... It, I don't know. It's just, it's very, very odd. Yeah. I, 
I don't know how to say this. Like, I don't really think people are inherently evil, but like just knowing how personal my life is and in, intertwined he is in with it, like he's the mm-hmm. only person I think I've ever like legitimately seen as evil, because it, uh, like he he seems to take pleasure from it. Like it's a, uh, uh, I don't I don't I don't know what the word for it is, but like he he does it he does seem I mean, to it's like just, relish it's clearly. It. Yeah, it's clearly abusive. I don't know like what his. I don't know that it really matters what his justification for it is because I think you have to make him stop doing this one way or the other. Um, or at least make it so you're not subjected to it anymore. But... Um, I, I can... I, I, um, I probably am not going to talk too much more because I, I appreciate sure. your input. But um, okay. I will say, like, one other aspect to this is, like, I... So with me and my stepsister, that's one thing. She uh, was traumatized by it. And uh, I think that sort of the family nurtured that into her. I th- I also think she actually was. Like, I, I'm not going to sit there and pretend like what she feels is fake. I don't think it's fake. But with me and my cousin, I don't feel traumatized by that. Maybe it's because everything else is just feels so awful that I'm just focusing on my stepfather. But in a lot of ways, I the reason I've never told anybody about my story with my cousin is because I feel like I'm protecting her because I don't want what is happening to me right now to ever happen to her. Because I don't think that she was necessarily doing something inherently like I, like it wasn't necessarily to my will. But I, I, I just think that the entire framing of we need to hold people accountable for their sexual behavior at age 10 for the rest of their lives i think that whole idea is really really bizarre yeah and like i just don't i just don't agree with it at all i think that um uh yeah she was she's traumatized like i i don't really believe that unless you like fucking held a gun to her head or something i really don't believe that if you're telling me this this girl her father is a sadistic manipulative psychopath prone to fits of rage that terrify his family but the thing well, that traumatized she... her was her 10 year old stepbrother like um, unsuccessfully trying to like hook up with her when she was eight like i just don't i don't like, if what you're saying is true, I don't believe that narrative. It just seems like well, everything around this guy is is designed to absolve him of all of his shortcomings and failings and blame them all on you. And that just seems like part of it. I think you're being scapegoated. Um, yeah, maybe. I, 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 I will say, like, when she... I, I've only ever seen her, like, two or three times since that event happened, and I never put together why until i was like 23 because it literally was like a non-event to me like i was just focused on the shit my stepdad was doing to me and that's what got drilled into my brain because that event was such a non-event to me i just didn't consider why i was being ostracized i thought maybe it was because i was doing drugs or something like that like i mean and obviously that could have factored into it Uh, yeah i just just the idea that you you would see a 12 year old's porn search history and still be thinking about it 20 years later is really fucking strange. Yeah. And talking about it. Mm-hmm. But somehow per- I, persuasively enough that you're that like your coworkers or workers are like, oh, I better not talk to this guy because he looked at he looked for child porn when he was 12. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, I, I will say before I ever uh, signed up for advice and confessions. The first thing I did was look up the statute of limitations. <laughs> For you? Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's he's fucking with your head. I, I yeah, I think therapy is a good idea because he has warped your sense. The just just the idea that any part of you thinks you might be in trouble or go to jail for talking about searching for child porn when you were 12 is like I, 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 you're, you, in, in the stories you've told, you, you sounds like you're being victimized by this person. I, there's no, 
I don't think there's any world in which um, anyone who matters is going to think that you should be in trouble for this. Okay, well, therapy it is, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I say that kind of like a meme. I actually don't... Uh, I mean that sincerely. I don't, I don't want it to sound like a meme. Yeah. I know. I understand. Okay, well... Uh, do you have anything else to say? Um, it's really hard to tell people part of being abused psychologically or even semi-sexually in this case is that if the abuser is successful you will feel like you are the one who did something wrong, like it's your fault, and like anybody you tell is going to just think you're gross. And yeah. I think that's something you're going to have to confront as you bring people in to your side on this. But I think... I, I guess just be prepared for that, but I, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, definitely take that into consideration. So, um, I don't really have anything else to add. So, okay. I uh, appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I guess uh, have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. That's it for today. Headphones off. Do I enjoy advice and confessions? Sometimes. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. I don't know if enjoy is the right word. Baby, 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 triple snake. Pog champ. What made you want to do advice and confessions? I don't know. It just popped into my head. Have you seen these Predator Sting Operation YouTube channels? It's some really messed up stuff. Yeah, I want to. I think I'm going to be doing a, a big. I think I'm going to be doing a big pedophile like holiday no like a like a show like a like a lifestyle like a video i'm gonna make a big pedophile video a series of videos and i want to interview some of those predator sting operations did the last one stepdad piss you off it appears that it appears that, that i did get a bit pissed off yeah do you think it's a good idea to call in or would you call in if you were a viewer? I think it depends on what you want to call about. I would say the more serious the thing you're calling about is, the more likely it is to not be a good idea. Extravaganza. Yes, that is the word I was thinking of. 
That's the one. A pedophile extravaganza. Yeah. You hear about this new dating app called iLadies? Disgusting stuff. No, I haven't. I haven't. I, I'm, in, I'm curious, though. Entrapment is against the law. Entrapment is against the law yet in this case. Yeah, I don't I don't see I don't agree with the prem, the the premise that every person who can be talked into breaking the law should be in jail. And I feel like entrapment like there's lots of people who would if a 15-year-old were dropped in their lap might engage with them sexually sexually but who uh, wouldn't seek it out and i don't know that like going door to door with 15 year old androids is the uh is a good idea i like to think of it as exploring confessions rather than enjoying well thank you for that uh justification i'll try using that with myself my advice relates directly to the problem of female horniness, and I submitted right before you brought that up. Well, good. I can't wait until we get there. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the David Feig, Feig, Feig documentary, Untouchable. No, I haven't. I haven't heard of it. Feels very pre-crime. Yeah, they get off on humiliating people. Yeah, I saw one where they called the elderly mom, and she felt she was having a heart attack. Yeah, that's it's fucked up pedo hunting yeah i want to i want to interview these pedo hunters uh i was well, back when my twitch career first started when destiny thrust me into the spotlight i got it i definitely got a phishing email an entrapment email a honeypot email from a female fan who was like who was like tee hee oh i'm only 14 but do you want to like talk i gotta i gotta talk to these people figure out why they're doing that. I got to interview the pedophiles. I got to interview the experts. I have a lot to do. Um, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, putting on an extravaganza is a lot. Where is the cue for the female horniness panel? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get some people with, like, you know, big audiences. I want it to be a big show. Uh, so I don't think it's going to be like a call-in thing. I don't know if you're a streamer. 